Mr. Bondi here with another botany lesson, this time on plant organization with a special focus on plant tissues and plant cell types. Before we dive into that, let's talk about the levels of organization of any multicellular organism, and they go as follows. They start with the, the most simplistic of them being the cell, then they build up to the tissues, then the organs, then the organ systems, and the organism. Now this image here is depicting that of an animal, a human. So we start with the cellular level. In this case, it looks like we're looking at a epithelial cell or a, a lining cell. And then we move up into the tissue that composes the, looks like the inside lining of the stomach wall. And then we go to the organ level, and now we're looking at the stomach. And then the organ that it's a part of would be the digestive system, and then all of the other systems then end in system, like the muscular system or the skeletal system or the nervous system. And then you put all of the organ systems together and you get the organism. Well, this is an example for an animal, but what about for a plant? So a plant, in this case, we're going to put together individual plant cells, and there's a few different types of plant cells that we'll look at. The same types of cells put together form tissues. The types of plant organs are leaves, stems, roots, and then flowers and the fruit. Organ systems, it's easy for plants. There's just two. There's the root system, which is everything beneath the ground, and the shoot system, which is everything above the ground, including stems and leaves and all the other structures. And then the organism is when you just put those two organ systems together. So let's take a look at some few, a few cell types. Uh, parenchyma is the most common type of cell that you'll find in plants. And they're, they're really simplistic. They have a relatively thin cell wall, and they can be used to do the, the most types of things within plants. Colenchyma is a type of cell that's used primarily more for flexible support. Um, they have slightly thicker cell walls, and you'll find them typically like right beneath the epidermis. And then finally, chema, which have the very thickest of cell walls, and they're there for extra strength and protection. So you'll find them in like the covering of shells of like a nut, for example, um, and, and in places that require extra protection. So let's talk about each cell type in a little bit more detail. So parenchyma, as I mentioned, is by far the most common type of cell. And these are the types of cells you'll find in the filling space and leaves and then in stems. And when you add in chloroplasts to them, they're the ones that will do actual photo photosynthesis. So chlorenchyma are just parenchyma cells that have chloroplast inside of them. They can be used for storage of materials. And one interesting fact is that most of them have 14 sides, which is a very unique polygon. But by, these are by far the most common type of plant cell, parenchyma. Colenchyma, as I mentioned before, are flexible support, and you'll typically find them surrounding structures, like surrounding the, or just inside of the epidermis, which is the outer covering of plant structures, or like lining the veins inside of celery. So there's an interesting diagram here. You've got a cross section of a celery here, and then the, the red spheres are all the vascular tissue, and then these blue ones on the outside of it, these are all colenchyma cells, and they're there to help give the celery strength and support. So if you've ever eaten celery and got those strings stuck in your teeth, those are colenchyma cells. Slarenchyma are much tougher, thicker, stronger cells. And there's really, there's two major types of them. There's fibers and there's sclerids. Sclerids, you'll notice if you've ever eaten a pear before and you notice the gritty texture inside of them, they can grow quite large too under the right types of stresses, these sclerids can. And those are made primarily of slarenchyma cells. And then fibers, which we, we will use specifically to make things like string and canvas and rope. Those are also things that are made of slarenchyma type cells. Most of these cells, once they reach maturity, are dead. They're just there for the structural support. They'll lose the nucleus, they'll lose the other structures inside of them, and they're just there to take up space and to do their job of support and protection. Okay, so let's talk about the types of plant tissues that there are. There's really, there's four tissues. There's dermal tissue. I've mentioned epidermis to you a couple times now, and these dermal tissues are covering tissues. There's ground tissue, which is just primarily filling tissue. You can see it really well in this light ring that's just in between these two green ones. All of that filling space, that's ground tissue. And ground tissue is made of the three types of cells that I just mentioned to you, the parenchyma, colenchyma, and slarenchyma. There's vascular tissue. Vascular tissue of xylem and phloem, and their job is to move materials around inside of the plant. There's xylem, which moves water, and phloem, which moves food. And then finally, meristematic tissue. And meristematic tissue is the type of tissue that provides growth. These are the only cells that are actively dividing all of the time inside of a plant. 
Let's start with the dermal tissue, the epidermis. And you can see it here in this cross section of a leaf. Here's the upper epidermis, just one cell layer thick on this plant. And then down here, the lower epidermis, which again is also one cell layer thick. You can notice this structure right here, which is called the stomata on leaf cells and or on leaves. And this allows for the exchange of gases, specifically water in and out of the leaf. But the epidermis is just one cell layer thick. Sometimes the epidermis will uh, generate some extra structures on top of it. Like for example, this cuticle, which is also made of cutin, which is there for waterproofing. Others will, will pr produce um, uh, hairs for protection or other glands as well for extra protective structures. As I mentioned before, the ground tissue is just the filling space and it's made up of those, of those three cell types, those parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Not a whole lot else to add there other than it's just that these are just the cells that fill up all of the empty space inside of plant structures. The vascular tissue. Now this is again, this is the one that's going to be used to move materials around. Remember that mosses, bryophytes, do not have vascular tissue. They're the only variety of plants that don't. All other varieties of plants do have vascular tissue. So we have our two types. The first is xylem, which its only job is to move water. So it starts, it's originated in the roots, and will trans water, transport water up from the roots into the stems, out into the leaves where the water is then used for photosynthesis. But this is a one-way street. It only takes water up from the ground into the leaves with the end point. Now this is driven by a few forces. Um, the, Osmosis is the powering force behind it, but we also have to do with the chemistry of water in, in place here. The cohesion and adhesion properties of water allow it to be carried up and significantly up against gravity into the plant and then up through this, this xylem tissue. It's powered as well by transpiration, which is the evaporation of water out through the leaves to create a concentration gradient to allow water to move through it. Phloem, which is pictured over here on the right, is a method of transport for food or really sap, sugary substances inside of the plant. Now this is a two-way street, so this can move the, the substances that are created in the leaves through photosynthesis back down to the roots where it can be stored and then back up from the roots through the stem back into the leaves for regrowth. We take advantage of this specifically when we tap maple trees for their sap. We tap them in like early February or late February, early March when they're just starting to regenerate their sap flow from their roots back up to regrow their leaves. So we take advantage of that. But plants do the same process. They move the materials in both directions, both up and down using the phloem. Meristematic tissue, as I mentioned, is the only types of tissues in plants that are actively undergoing cell division all time. There's two types. The first is called apical meristems, and these provide what we call primary growth or vertical growth. So you'll find these at the tips of stems and at the tips of roots. So right here is what we would consider to be the apical meristem. And so this is the location right here where all of the cell division is happening to make this stem longer. All growth for plants to make them taller or longer comes from the tips, not from the base. Over here is a root. And again, all the cell division that will be adding onto the length of this root is happening right here in what we call the apical meristem. At the end of roots, roots they have what's called a root cap, which is a protective structure that protects the root as it grows out into the soil. To protect it protects it, basically protects it from friction. The other type of meristematic tissue is called lateral meristematic tissue, and this provides secondary growth or lateral growth, essentially making the plant wider. The first one to take note of is called the vascular cambium. And so we have a microscopic image here of what we call a vascular bundle. A vascular bundle contains the vascular tissue of phloem and xylem, and then sandwiched right in between it, you've got the vascular cambium. The vascular cambium's job through cell division is to create the phloem and to create the xylem. So you'll find rings of vascular cambium right in between the xylem and phloem. Now, when we're talking about that of like, say for example, a tree, the rings that we see within a tree, all of those rings of growth are really just layers of xylem that were added by the vascular cambium. So the vascular cambium in trees is actually located just beneath the bark. And its job is to add those new layers or those new rings of xylem growth, which is wood, year after year after year. Now, an interesting fact too is that there are two rings of growth added for each year, a calendar year for a tree. There's spring wood and summer wood. Um, the summer wood is a thicker portion of wood because it grows faster in the summer than it does in the spring. But that all of that wood is actually composed of xylem that's created by the vascular cambium. Vascular cambium's job, to create the vascular tissue. The other type of meristematic tissue that we find is called cork cambium. 
This is only found in woody plants, and its job is to produce the bark or the cork, which is found right on the outside of the plant. And again, this makes the woody plant, the tree, wider by adding to its, to its width. And those are all of our types of plant cells and plant tissues.